ladies and gentlemen, boils and goyles, I am going to do a review of movies that I think are underrated movies, that are movies that are considered bad movies, that are actually good movies. And if you don't like that, then you can go fuck yourself, okay? Here it is. Stick it up your ass and fuck yourself, okay? But anyways, I'm going to go on a, a, a rant and a spiel on why I think these movies are good movies and why I think that, that you know, I think that they're good on my take on them. And I know a lot of people hate these movies and they think they're bad movies. But I really like them. I really think they're good movies and I think they're, they're underrated and I think they're, some of them are cult classics, some of them are, are destined to be cult classics, but they kind of have a bad rap and they don't get the fucking respect that they deserve uh, as far as movies are concerned. I don't know why, you know. Um, I myself, you know, wanted to get to the bottom of it and say, okay, why do people dislike these movies? Why do they think they're, they're bad? I know why people dislike these movies and I know why people think they're bad, but I think they're good. So I'm going to go into why people think they're bad and then I'm going to tell you why I think that they're good movies. Because I think that these are good movies and I think the critics and some of the fans even are full of shit. You know, I'm going to say that right out loud. It, it, some of the fans of, of these films, the fans are full of shit and some of the, the the critics are full of shit you know but I'm one of those people where I am an amateur filmmaker uh, I've been on hiatus for about two or three years now I haven't done much of anything uh, but you know uh, now I'm kinda making a slow comeback and this is one of the other reviews that I do and I'll post more as time progresses it's just a matter of time but here is uh, my review on why I think these movies are good movies and why they have a bad rap. So I'd like to call this movies that have a bad rap that are actually good. So here's my review. The first movie I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about the original 1989 Punisher with Dolph Lundgren. Okay, this movie is an underrated movie and it is really good. I'm going to talk about why the fans of this don't like this one movie in particular. And I'm going to talk about why the, with, the, with film critics it was praised by film critics. This is one of the few that I'm reviewing that is praised by film critics. But it's not praised by the fans. I'm going to tell you why. A lot of the fans that are, that are fans of the Punisher comic books don't like this Punisher due to the fact that it does not show the skull in the movie. That's bullshit, because it does show the skull. If you watch the 1989 Punisher with Dolph Lundgren and Louis Gossett Jr., um, if you pay close attention, uh, there are scenes where the Punisher, he leaves behind his knife. And on the tip of the handle of the knife, there's a small skull. That skull is the Punisher's logo. It is done in a very subliminal way, the way they show the skull. So you have to pay really close attention. You have to be very noticeable to actually... Uh, the, the one thing I really like about this is the direction and the cinematography are fantastic. This is like, for me, it's like taking Punisher and ripping it right out of the comic book and putting it in your face in a live-action movie form. And this is like the first Punisher movie. There's three all together. You know, there's the 2004 remake and then there's Punisher Warzone which came out in 2009. And Punisher Warzone um, really sucks. I really think it does suck. But most people don't like that one anyway. It really was really bad. The Punisher remake was okay, but this is the best Punisher movie, in my opinion. Uh, most people think the 2004 Punisher is the best Punisher movie, but I beg to differ. I think that this one's the best Punisher movie. The one thing I really like about it is the fact that it stays true to the comic book origin, and it's very dark and very lurid, and it has a great way of telling the story of the Punisher. and, and you know, it follows the story very closely. The only thing in this film that they really change up 
in the 2004 Punisher is they change up the fact that uh, the way his kids are killed. In the original comic, his uh, family is massacred at a picnic and he's left for dead, so they're killed by the mafia. Uh, they're shot to death. Um, in this movie, though, uh, they change it up a little bit. Instead, they're going to a picnic and they're in a car and his wife and his kids are, are victim of a car bombing. So they, they kind of change that up a little bit, but they do a good job at changing it up. And a lot of people, like, you know, rip on this Punisher movie and say, you know, well, it doesn't show the, the Punisher skull, and it's, it's, they say it's too violent and that, and it's like, I, I like the fact that it's too violent. Violence is good in, in movies, okay? I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. I like violence in the cinema. Okay, as long as nobody's getting hurt, I like violence, okay? I am a gore hound, I am a, a person that I'm addicted to uh, cinema violence. And this movie delivers the goods. It does everything a comic book movie should do. It's a comic book movie that really gets shit on by the general public. It gets shit on by the fans of Punisher. It gets shit on by some of the film critics, but not all of the film critics. Most film critics like this one. It's one of the few movies I'm, I'm reviewing or talking about um, that doesn't get its just desserts. And I'm doing, the, I'm doing, the reason why I'm doing this whole review, normally I don't like to do reviews, but I'm going to do these movies that I own that I think are underrated movies that don't get their, their respect. So I'm just going to read the plot to you just briefly. Uh, the Avenging Angel of the Marvel Comics comes brilliantly to life in this action-adventure thriller. Dolph Lundgren stars as Frank Castle, the Punisher, a veteran cop who loses an entire family to a mafia car bomb. Only his ex-partner believes Castle survived the blast to become the Punisher, a shadow, invincible fighter against evil who lives for total revenge on his mob enemies. Lashing out from a labyrinth of subterranean sewers, the Punisher leads a heavily armed raid in the world of brutal crime and savage retribution. A world where only one thing is certain, the guilty will be punished. And uh, this was directed by um, Mark Goldblatt. Now, if you don't know who Mark Goldblatt is, I'll tell you who he is. Mark Goldblatt actually helped, the guy who directed this movie helped produce The Terminator, okay, in 1984. This came out in 1989, a couple years after The Terminator came out. And this, to me, is the quintessential Dolph Lundgren movie. It's a quintessential comic book movie, too. I think. You know, I would put this up there with um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Batman, Batman Returns, Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Destroyer, the new Conan. Um, I would put it up there with many other of my favorite comic book movies. Swamp Thing. Uh, you know, this is one that really doesn't always get the respect it deserves. So I'm doing this to give it respect and do it justice. Um... I would give the movie myself on a star rating, four stars being the best, one being the worst. I give it four of four stars. This is a fucking badass movie, and it is so entertaining. Um, and that's what, what a movie should be. It should be entertaining. So this, it, to, this to me, is a really, really good one. And uh, I don't know why so many people shit on it, you know, but it's just a good one, and it needs... You know, this is my, my review, this is my opinion, you know, I do think it's good, you know, it, it's, it's practically flawless. I, I like the way it's directed, you know. Mark Goldblatt knew what he was doing when he directed this, you know. He was a fan of the, he, or I should say he is a fan of the comic himself, you know. So, this is, this is like the first, like, Marvel comic book movie, as a matter of fact, 1989, you know, and people forget about this one. You know, and it, it's in this brilliantly beautiful keep case, you know, and it's like hard hard shell keep case, one of those heavy duty ones. So uh, I really do love love that movie. So I'm going to talk about the next couple of movies. So moving on, um, I'm going to talk about another uh, underrated comic book movie. So mainly in this rant or reviews, I'm talking about... Uh, movies that I feel that are underrated, that are comic book movies and horror movies. Because I had to go through my whole collection of films that I own currently and look at, okay, what movies do I own that are really terribly underrated and kind of get shit on by critics and, and fans alike? And I'm just coming to the conclusion that some of the critics and the fans are full of bullshit. You know, 
I'm one of those people that I look at films and I admire them for what they are. You know, 